Hello there, my name is Dr. Brent Hollers and welcome to another Replit tutorial. I'm going to be taking you through how to create a basic web page that has a link style sheet in Replit. So let's get started. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have an account. If you don't have an account, then you can click on the button below to show you how to actually set up your initial account. Once you have that set up, then you need to go into the login and you're going to log into your account. And then once you've done that, then you have the option to set up a team, which is in another tutorial that I'm making. Uh, but for now, what we're going to look at is how to create a basic replica again with um, a HTML page and some CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new REPL up here, or I can click on the plus up here. And I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask me exactly what do I want to create. Well, in this case, we're doing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, they will automatically populate with a name. I'm just going to do HTML tutorial. And you'll have the option to see who owns it. In this case, I have a team, so I could let the team own that, and then other people could modify it. Um, and then I also have the option to make it public or private. And then depending on what type of account, you have a limited number of public or private replits and you have a unlimited number of public. So I'm just going to leave this public um, so that you can actually see the link to this uh, at the end of the video. So I'm going to click on create repl and it'll take a second, it will load, it'll do its thing. Once it's done loading, you'll notice that you'll have over here on the right, this is your preview window, you'll have your console down here in the bottom right, that just allows you to run some basic commands in that and see some basic outputs. In here you have your coding window over on the far left, you have your tabs for files, version control, and so on. Again, we'll talk about each of these individually in other tutorials, uh, but it's a good idea to have an understand the basic workspace. So I can drag this over if I want to see a little more space, and you'll notice that by default, when I create one of these pages, uh, Repl is kind enough to create an index.html file for me a script.js file, and a style.css file. You'll also notice that you have some basic content already filled out. You have your doc type declared, your HTML opening and closing tags, you have your head with your viewport and with the title, uh, and then with your link to your style sheet. So this is very important that this is done correctly. So if you decide that you're going to rename this style sheet, then you also need to make sure that you change it in here as well. Um, so there's your name that you would have to change if you want to do that. So the first thing that we want to do is just go in and we want to create some basic content. Um, we're going to do this above the script. So I'm going to start out with a title. So we'll do an H1 and we'll say this is my sample web page. And I'm going to close the H1. You'll notice that they have this tool called Emmet, which is a universal kind of complete autocomplete that allows you to um, finish tags and insert content without having to fully type it. Um, and what happens is when I type those things, let's say I want to go back and do this again, I can do the open angle bracket. And you'll notice that the closing H1 tag appears um, immediately. I can then hit the tab key and it will automatically insert that for me. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do UL. And I can uh, close my angle bracket there. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a list. So I'm going to do list item. And I'm going to say dogs. And then cats. And then we'll finish off with fish. So you might have figured out I'm doing common pets here, and I need to close off my UL tag here. And once I've got that created, backspace that so I have proper indentation, I can actually hit run here, and we'll see this is my sample web page, that's the H1, and then here's my list of bulleted items, so that's my UL. I can also do an ordered list, I can do all sorts of things. I'm just going to do a quick table here. And um, so I'm just going to do table, and then I'm going to do table head, which is going to be our heading, and then I'm going to do th, and we'll say that this is um, rank, and then team. This is going to be a very simple, just two column table. 
and I'm going to close off that table head and then I'm going to do a table row and I'm going to do first place and then D and then we'll say this is the Giants and TD and then finish off my PR and so I now have a table here oh, forgot the closing table tag there we go so now I have my table down here um, of course, I could also set the border and, and those types of things, but this gives us a general gist of how to create some HTML content. Um, one of the other nice things that uh, Repl allows you to do is to go ahead and create and upload image files. So when we do that, we can upload them into our folder hierarchy here, just like you would normally do in a standard IDE, and then I can reference them in here. So we're going to insert an image and um, see what that looks like. All right, so now that we're ready to try and upload an image, we're going to go and click on the three dots here. We're going to choose Upload File. And then we're going to find our picture. In this case, I just did one of a Golden Retriever puppy. And it should upload it here for me. So now we have our file uploaded, but the problem is this is a really long name. I got this from Google, so I really need to rename this. So I'm going to click on the three dots and choose rename. And I can actually change this to just puppy. And it's in there. So now I can take this puppy image and I can insert it into my page here. So I'm going to go right above this script because your script should appear at the bottom. I'm going to do the image tag. SRC equals quotes and then puppy dot JPG and then close angle brackets and then when I run it my image is going to be here now it's gigantic so if I want to see it um, I do have this preview window but one of the neat features is I can click on this open in a new tab you'll notice that it actually bumps this out and opens it in a new tab and we can see the full image of our golden retriever there um, so that's just a nice way of going and checking that one of the things that I also like to tell students is that when we're in here I can leave this tab open and I can change something like let's say I added another bit to my table here and so I'm going to do TD and I'm going to do let's say Chiefs okay and I run my code here obviously I see it there it does not impact it here but if I hit refresh now it does. So I tend to, when I'm coding, I keep this window open like this. I'll just hit run. I kind of ignore what's going on here because as soon as you start getting any reasonable size web page, it's going to be difficult to see um, just because of the size of it. So you can go here and just hit refresh and everything that you see will populate there. So from here, I can then do some things with styling. Um, so now that I've got that page complete, I can select some styles. So I'm going to do by H1 and I'm just going to choose color and we'll do one of the nice things about this is it, it auto populates all these named colors um, that are um, common in HTML and so I'm going to change the color to cadet blue and I can test this selector in CSS by hitting run and I can see again it did update it there I could also refresh it here and see that it updates it there um, I could also size my image so I do image and we do height and let's say 150 pixels and width is 100 pixels actually I'm going to flip-flop those because this is actually a horizontal layout so I'm going to change that to 100 pixels I'm going to run it we'll see that my image is resized so I can actually see it in here now um, if I run it and refresh it in here you'll notice it's much smaller so that's some basic styling that I can do in um, my CSS file and again the nice thing is that all this stuff is organized uh, so you don't have to use super long links and those types of things when you're having students work in this area so um, with this another thing that you could do is you could create a folder and you could put the image inside of that folder Oops, sorry I got to name it first so I could call this images 
and then I could put puppy.jpg inside of images, which is what we would typically do in a website. And then I would just say images slash puppy.jpg. And so that allows me to have an actual file and folder structure for this. So this has been a basic introduction in how to create a simple HTML page and do a little bit of styling and see how we can preview it, how we can interact with the interface.